welcome back to this week's episode of The Prosperous Empath. I'm your host, Katherine Wood. So excited to have you here with me today. And before I jump into introducing our guest on the show today, I just wanted to share a couple of housekeeping updates, some intentional (laughs) and some rather quite unintentional. So maybe the unintentional first. So it seems like my website has been hacked and a couple of you have reached out looking for specific show notes for episodes and they are currently missing. So my team has been working in the background for a couple months now, getting the website back up and fully restored and in order. Um, But you will likely not find show notes for about the last couple months of episodes. So lots of learnings about that experience, and I may share more about that in a future episode. But for now, if you are looking for anything in particular, you are welcome to email me or DM me on Instagram and myself or my team will respond shortly and share with you whatever you're looking for. And I um, have been given a timetable of the next one to two weeks to have everything back up in order. And truly, I cannot wait. (laughs) Now, the more intentional housekeeping item is that we're taking a summer holiday. So I am excited to share this week's episode. And then we have another guest episode next week. And then I am taking the final two weeks off in August, as well as the first week through Labor Day, through U.S. Labor Day in September. So I will not be back into your inbox and ears until the second week in September. And I'm just so delighted for this break. If you've been following me along for a while, you've likely heard me share about taking um, unplugged time every August when my family goes to our summer cottage in New Brunswick, Canada. It is such a restorative, replenishing time for me, and I highly recommend it. Um, especially for all my sensitive empaths. But I'm excited for the break and excited to bring you some amazing new content in the fall. So be on the lookout for that. And if you were interested in joining us for our final non-networking power hour for the summer, um, we still have one outstanding and it will be on Monday, August 14th at 12 noon. And you, again, you're welcome to email me or Instagram my team, me and my team for the link and all the show notes again should be restored in the next one to two weeks. And with that, I am excited to introduce to you our guest today. So I have Fifi Mason with me here on the podcast today. And Fifi is a personal brand and visibility coach. She is the founder of the Quietly Influential Summit, and she's the VP of Introvert You Entrepreneur. And I was introduced to Fifi by another guest that I've had on the podcast, Jen Corcoran, who is truly just the queen of LinkedIn and connecting people. And she thought that Fifi and I would have an amazing connection, and she she was not wrong. <laughs> it was um, so amazing connecting with Fifi and just having truly just an instantaneous connection. And I think that's something I continuously appreciate about connecting with introverted sensitives and empaths is just that, you know, when you know your people, you just create naturally aligned connections and collaborations. And I'm just thrilled to have her on the podcast. Um Fifi is the introvert's impact coach. She inspires quiet introverts to find their voice, get visible, and confidently share their ideas with the world. She specializes in helping introverted life coaches step into their quiet power so they can make an impact and transform lives on their terms. I could not relate more with that term of being a quiet introvert that uh, resonates so deeply. And I know it will with so many of my listeners as well. And truly this message just feels really timely because something that I've been speaking with a lot of my clients about recently is the reminder that as sensitive empaths, 
we may not necessarily have the loudest voice in the room, but that does not mean that we do not have the most potent message. And I think it is so important for us to truly embrace our styles of communication, our ways of showing up and truly creating that sense of safety for ourselves so that we feel safe being authentic in the rooms and the spaces that we choose to be in. So um, it's such a deep conversation. We, We jump into Fifi's journey and how she landed on calling herself the introvert's impact coach. She shares what made the biggest difference for her as she went through her own self-discovery journey and what supported her the most along the way. Uh, We discuss the importance of belonging, especially as an introvert and an empath, which is something that clearly um, is a really powerful theme for me as well. And then we jump into this term of self-silencing that Fifi has dubbed, and she shares a lot more about what it means and how it's been a reflection of her own journey. It is such a deep conversation. I just know you're going to resonate deeply with her message, and I hope you enjoy. Let's jump in. Welcome to the Prosperous Empath Podcast, designed especially for empaths and highly sensitive entrepreneurs just like you who are committed to achieving holistic success. I'm your host, Catherine Wood, Master Certified Coach, Author, Mastermind Leader, and Founder of Unbounded Potential, a boutique coaching firm for empathic entrepreneurs. I'm on a mission to bring empathy back into the world of business. Each episode will focus on achieving more by doing less through leveraging empath-friendly leadership practices, boundaries, rituals, and systems, all the while continuing to care deeply about ourselves, others, and the world around us. If you are committed to joyful living and running a conscious business, but amassing wealth while doing so, proving that you can have both in a society that tells you you can't, then you are in the right place. Join me here each week to find out how. Be sure to subscribe and leave a review so you won't miss an episode. Plus, you'll find all the show notes and helpful resources over at unbounded-potential.com. Well, Fifi, I'm I'm so thrilled to have you on the podcast today. I think that we connected um, because a mutual friend, Jen Corcoran, um, had had said I should chat with you and. Uh, and it's been so fun kind of following you online and getting to peer into your world. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'd love to just invite you to kick us off today by sharing a little bit about your story and, uh, and how you got to, how you got to be here. Yeah, certainly. So I, um, I'm a personal brand strategist and a personal brand coach, and I work with introverted, quiet introverted coaches. And it's been a journey to this point, really. It didn't start off with me working with introverts or working in personal branding at all. I started off as a brand and website designer back in 2018. And I had a fairly successful year in my first year. It it all kind of blew up and, and was... Um, I got some amazing opportunities with some incredible people just through word of mouth, referrals, and and a little bit of um a little bit of networking in Facebook groups, which was quite interesting. And after that year, I started to attract clients that weren't particularly. Uh, my ideal clients. So I would have to get up and work on projects that I wasn't keen on working on, doing things I wasn't really enjoying and really just being asked to do things which I didn't really agree with. And I found that was because I was not attracting the right kinds of clients because I wasn't being myself, I wasn't showing up, I wasn't being open and and 
showing who I am and what my values are and all of that kind of stuff. So I was at this really tricky point in my business where I was debating whether to go back to work, work with someone else, um, because these clients, they were leaving me in tears, some of them. And I just didn't even want to get out of bed in the morning to to go and do the work for them. So I I had to make some changes, some drastic changes in my business. And that's when I went on this self-discovery journey is what I describe it as. And it was developing my personal brand. I started working with a, a business coach and really learning more about personal branding and what it means and all of the different stages to personal branding. And that's when I found what I really wanted to do. And that that was personal branding. It was helping clients, helping my um, branding clients really figure themselves out before they get to the stage of branding their business. And so I started going down that path. And the more I learned about myself, the more I realized that it was because of my introverted, quiet personality that I just really struggled and had a lot of challenges with putting myself out there and showing up and all of those things that came along with it. And it just made so much sense to then niche down and and focus on working with quite introverted business owners and, and quite introverted coaches to help them to really start making an impact in the way that feels more aligned with who they are and with their personality. So yeah, I went on this whole discovery journey and ended up helping introverts with their personal brand. Mm. You know, I'm having this very distinct experience being with you in this moment that is actually the exact same experience I had the last time that we had a virtual chat, which I don't think I shared with you that, um, it's so easy being with you because you are so grounded in who you are. And I think, um, you know, being intuitive empaths and, and sensitives, like we, we just, um, we discern our people, right? It's like, we just kind of like know who our people are and, and we can also sense, um, those who've, who've done their work. And it's just really clear in being with you, how grounded you are and how, how much you actually have done your own self-discovery work to discern who you really are and what you're about and what you believe in. Um, People often reflect to me that same thing that I'm very grounded and it's just a joy being with you because of how grounded you are. And I think that a lot of my listeners are are in that place of being on their own self-discovery journeys and really trying to discern who they really are so that they can build their business in alignment with and as the expression of who they are and their values and what they believe and how they how they want to work and operate in their life. And so yeah, I'm just curious like as you as you have embarked on your self-discovery journey over the past 5 6 years like what um what's made the biggest difference for you or what has supported you most in in answering those questions for yourself well yeah part of that journey of of developing your personal brand really starts with who you are and that's the fundamental part and figuring out what what your passion is what your purpose is your values and and really aligning your business with those And then it's really starting to think about who you can help the most and who you can impact the most and finding your niche and finding the people that need what you have to offer. And then it's really communicating that, communicating what everything that you are and and really understanding the needs of the people that you help the most and once you can communicate all of that, that's when things start to happen. That's when the opportunities start to come to you. That's when everything feels more aligned and natural and you show up feeling much more um, much more in, in alignment and, and have a, a sense of belonging 
Um, so I have what I call the the three Bs in um, or, or also called the visibility pillars, and the and they are the three Bs, which are belief, belief in yourself, knowing yourself, balance, knowing your energy, which is crucial for for us introverts and and also empaths, and then also belonging. And belonging is once you have that belonging, you know your place, you know your people. That is when you feel so much more confident and comfortable doing what you're doing and it just gives you the the energy the what I call soul energy to keep going and um keep keep yourself um moving forward and and taking action yeah I love that I'm like shaking aggressively over here (laughs) because like I couldn't agree more and I think that um yeah belief balance and, and belonging. Like I think that belonging is, um, it's been so key to my own journey and, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of consistently reminded how, when we create that sense of belonging with ourselves, we create that belonging externally as well, right? Like the more we access that sense of belonging within, the more we find our people and our community and our environment and permission to be ourselves more consistently and reliably everywhere all the time. Definitely. Yeah. When, when we have belonging, it's, it's it's one of the hierarchy of needs and when you find your place the place where you feel most comfortable the most the the person you're you're right where you need to be and you're the person that you need to be and when you're sat in that belonging space that is when you, you it just gives you the confidence and the and the power to step out there and do the things that you need to do Mm -hmm. I was, I just recorded a podcast episode yesterday, um, with, a uh, she's a speaker consultant and we were also talking about belonging and how important belonging is in, uh, owning your message and telling your story. And, uh, it's very affirming for me because I, I wrote a book called belonging in 2020. So it's so fun hearing, um, hearing, so many people who have this values alignment with me talking about this and being a stand for sharing this message. And I think it's really in alignment with what you and I are going to talk about, which I know is something that's really important to you right now, which is this concept of of self-silencing, which I've never heard before. So I would love for you to share with my audience, like what is self-silencing? What does it mean to you? Yes. So Self-silencing is is when we don't speak out, we dismiss our own ideas, our opinions and our perspectives, and we keep ourselves from being authentic for fear of for, fe- for fear of consequences. And I I have been doing a bit of work recently on going back to my purpose and when I do this with my clients, I ask the question, what did you see in the world that you wanted to change? And I thought it's time for me to go back and and really reflect on that. What have I seen? What am I seeing in the world that I want to change? And this is what has, what has kind of shifted for me towards helping my clients with self-silencing and to stop self-silencing because I've noticed that it's important for everyone to have a voice in life, in business, in society. And I see so many quiet, introverted individuals, people who can make a huge difference in the world and transform lives but they're just holding themselves back and they they have ideas they have perspectives and opinions that we actually need in the world and so my mission has kind of shifted to help them to find their voice and and move past the discomfort to stop self-silencing and really start to show up and 
really there's nothing stopping us but ourselves we we are the ones that we can we can actually do this we just need to move past it so that is kind of what uh, self-silencing looks like there are probably um there are five different ways to uh or reasons why we self-silence and and different different ways that I have noticed that people self-silence that we can go through um, just to, to give examples. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, as you were sharing about that concept, like I just, you know, I was thinking about for me and like oftentimes the way in which I self-silence, it comes out as sheepishness. Like there are, you know, beliefs I have or ways that I operate in my business, which over the years have occurred as, as sheepish because they're not necessarily what I was taught or what I see others doing. And, um, what, I mean, in hearing, in hearing you share, like, I think that that sheepishness for me is simply and often a reflection of something that really works for me. And I just haven't owned it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I do think that that was in large part why I launched the podcast because so many of the ways in which I operate as an empath in business are in stark contrast to how I was trained as a coach and, um, and really the ways in which I've kind of, you know, built this, um, this harvesting, uh, this harvesting mindset rather this the, rather than this like hunting model, you know, like I think in business, so many of us are kind of taught that we need to like hunt for clients, go after them, you know, bring this real masculine energy and, um, and, and me too. And I think that the more feminine approach to business where there's more flow and ease and welcoming people in has been something that I have personally stopped self-silencing over the years and really owned okay. that this is what I believe and you can thrive in business and you can build a very lucrative business when you really own your values and how you choose to operate. And clearly my dog is agreeing because she is barking <laughs> in the background. <laughs> so, so yeah, let's, I, let's, let's really dig into these five ways yeah, in which we self-silence. Yeah, but that that was a great um a great description of how of how someone could be self-silencing and noticing that is is just crucial because then you can shift and change and and work through through whatever it is that's stopping you. But yeah, so there are five five reasons that we self-silence or at least the five reasons that I have kind of noticed the most and 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 these come up the most with my clients or um with those who I speak to and so the first one is um you're terrified of sharing more about yourself your views and your business because of what they might think of you what people might think of you and this is specifically the opinions of those who matter most to you so your friends your family colleagues peers and clients so you're constantly worrying about their opinions and and it's those who matter to you and and it's that fear of rejection coming up it's holding back because you feel like they're going to change their opinion of you because of something you might say or or do so that's one of the most common reasons people will self-silence. Can I just stop, pause you there? Because I think that is such a key one for, for introverts and empaths, because we have such a default uh, commitment to relationship, to maintaining and prioritizing relationship. And I think we often shape shift or kind of, um, you know, wear this camouflage uh, archetype so as to maintain relationship or protect them or, you know, be someone other than who we really are in order to hold on to that relationship. When in reality, I think uh, 
the journey of every empath who's committed to really healing their disenfranchised parts is that we have to own who we really are. And in that journey, we oftentimes do lose relationships. We lose those relationships that are unhealthy or where there's kind of that uh, unnatural balance between how much we give and how much others take from us. Um, So we do. I think that I really love that you started there because I think that is the journey of, um, it's certainly been my journey and I think so many of my listeners will resonate with that, that just that reminder that we really have to uh, own and acknowledge where we are shape shifting, where we're um, not being our full selves so as Mm -hmm. to maintain relationships or care for other people or um, hold on to something that, you know, may not potentially always be for us. Yes, definitely. And, and, and we can get into some of the ways we can navigate these things later in the conversation, but yeah, this one, this one is probably the biggest one for specifically introverts and and probably empaths as well. So I I do see this one a lot. It comes up so much and it's just, yeah, worrying that people are going to reject you, reject your ideas and change their opinions of you because of what you're talking about, what you're doing, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And it's really that key noticing who those people are as well. It's the people that matter to you. I think we could get past the whole um, stranger on social media. We could probably... We could probably ignore that, but we we will always still hold on to well, what is my what is my best friend going to say, or what what would my my mum say? Things like that. It's we're still going to have those and need to work through um, to 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 move past that and and to to really be able to speak out and stop self silencing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, what's next? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> next is. You're, you are afraid that being too promotional or expressing opinions that don't align with someone else's will upset them. You feel responsible for other people's feelings, even if it means sacrifice, even if it means sacrificing your own growth and success. And the weight of other people's opinions is suffocating you and you're struggling to find your voice. So this one is a very common, again, it's worrying that you're going to do something too promotional, put put off your clients, put people off because you're, you're trying to sell something to them and they instantly are going to hate it. You, you take responsibility for the, the feelings that they're going to have when they see that social media post of you selling something. And we need to kind of move past that, that worry that we're going to upset people um, and, and move past it so that we can grow and be successful. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still nodding aggressively over here <laughs> because I, I these are brilliant, Fifi. Like, I think that you know, something I often share in my mastermind with, with our masterminders is this reminder that if you think you're being salesy, you are right. It's like, if this default fear and orientation towards how you may be showing up is kind of driving your energy, then that's likely the energy that you're giving off. And I think for, you know, for us introverts and, and intuitive empaths, like we have to be really clear about our intentions, our commitments, and 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 our values, so that we can really come from those grounded places. Um, yeah, I really, I really love that. Like, I think, I think it's um, it's so important to just be really clear about uh, your who you're committed to being in the matter and coming from that place. Yeah, definitely. And it's just, I think this one was one that I struggled with the most in those early days of worrying of being too promotional. Um, 
I, I, it was a mixture. There was a lot of I wasn't being myself, but also I I didn't ever want to post anything about about what I was doing. I I would just post generic facts and figures and hoped that that would attract the sorts of clients that I wanted. And and it, it didn't. It didn't work. And it doesn't work. You have to really think about all of these elements of your personal brand and be able to put yourself out there in all these different ways and being promotional is part of that and it's definitely a struggle for a lot of people Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay what's next (laughs) okay so (laughs) next up we have you often feel like your thoughts ideas and opinions are insignificant and won't make a difference to anyone the fear of being overlooked and uh, and unheard is crushing your spirit and you're losing confidence in your ability to contribute to the world around you. So quite a powerful one, which is, yeah, you don't feel like anyone's going to care what you have to say. And this is another huge reason why a lot of a lot of a self silence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think this is just a reminder for why, um, why introverted business owners need to be telling their stories and sharing their messages because there is a large audience that's just waiting for people and voices like theirs to take up more space to have those models and those champions to really uh, esteem and um and feel encouraged by and called forth by you know like I, I i i love that like i think that um yeah when i started my business like i didn't i didn't see others in business running their running their business talking like i do so I, I, yeah, I I couldn't agree more. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that when you, when you start to really get to, to a point where you're confident and in your beliefs and your opinions that, and your story, as you were saying, that's when you kind of let go of this one. Um, but as, as I said, we'll, we'll get into what you can do to, move past some of these things um, in a little while. But yeah, that was number three. So number four is you worry about being challenged or questioned on your ideas and fear you won't be able to defend yourself effectively. You have, um, you might have the, you might have a worry of being seen as like foolish or being proven wrong or uh, struggle to assert yourself in in a certain situation um and just that idea of being challenged can put you off doing mm-hmm. something in the first place mm-hmm. yeah I mean I you know I work with a lot of clients who are sensitive empaths and I think something that uh, they struggle with across the board is this idea of um, just having this commitment to to relationship and maintaining relationship. And I think there's oftentimes this um, this posturing around really being willing to to own what they think or how they need to work in business because they're afraid of being challenged. And something that we often have a really great laugh about after the fact is that I think, so many of us make it a bigger deal in our heads, this idea around the ways in which we'll be challenged by our clients or potential clients, than it actually turns out to be like, it's always, it's typically so much bigger of a deal in our heads than in reality. Definitely. Yeah. I, you, you build it up so much and you, you worry what, what people are going to say, what people are going to think, what people are going to question you about. And it just becomes this bigger thing. And actually I might share a reframing technique that works quite well with this, which I shared previously. And that is, um, I I can't remember who came up with this and I really wish I I knew, but, um, 
it it's a very simple three sentence it, or three questions which is what is the worst that can happen what is the best that can happen and what is most likely to happen and when you ask yourself those three questions you really come to the conclusion that the most likely thing to happen isn't that big of a deal and um if you were to get challenged it probably would be something quite simple that you could answer so <laughs> when we start to really break it down it does it does make things um a little bit easier totally I'm taking that one gorgeous <laughs> love it <laughs> yeah I, I I do wish I um remembered who who came up with it it's very very simple and easy to remember um, so that was number four. And the fifth and final reason you might be self-silencing is you often imagine people laughing at you or not taking you seriously, leaving you feeling isolated and alone. The fear of being ostracized is paralyzing and your ability to connect with others. And the fear of being rejected and ostracized is paralyzing your ability to connect with others and you're struggling to find your place in the world. So that is the fifth and final one. And it's more around feeling like you might do something and someone might think it's silly. Someone might think you're unprofessional. That one comes up a lot. And I think for a lot of people starting out as well, this is a huge one. That fear of not being professional and and you thinking that you have to do everything in a certain way to be seen as credible. Um, but it comes again back to the fear of rejection and and not feeling like you have found your place in the world. You know, I'm just I'm really struck by how um, deeply wise these. Uh, points are and um and I'm imagining that they're really personal to you because I think so much of our life's work that we share is deeply personal to us and a reflection of our journeys and so I'm curious how how this is has is a reflection is and has been a reflection of your journey oh definitely every single one of these have, <laughs> I have <Ditto. laughs> experienced and and been working through and i think the one the most recent one is the is, is the actual putting my thoughts and ideas out there and not feeling like they're insignificant i think that's for me been the most recent but throughout my journey i I've, I've gone through all of these these five things and worked through them and and still have some struggles with them i i mean that's why every at every stage of your business, you're going to experience new things and new challenges and new approaches to um, how in, it might show up, basically. So it's always going to be a challenge to keep working through, but to be conscious of and know how to work through certain areas and certain things. Um, but yeah, that's definitely yeah they're all definitely things that I've been through mm -hmm. well so I, I mean I think I think it really begs the question you know so as as our listeners are really noticing the ways in which they do self-silence um where do you recommend they start like how can they begin their own self-discovery work to um to embrace more of who they really are well, it starts with acknowledging which of those, if even if all of them are something that is holding you back and knowing what they are. Um, and then I go back to, to the visibility pillars or the, the three Bs, and they are the three things that we are lacking, that we need, and they are the solution as well as, as a problem. So we're lacking belief which is very clear in a lot of those, like belief in ourselves, belief in um, in our opinions, our perspectives, our ideas, in who we are as a person, we're lacking belief. So we need that belief. We also need the balance because specifically for introverted business owners, we need to have a good balance on our energy and 
and definitely for empaths as well with your emotional energy it's very very crucial so knowing your energy knowing what you're capable of as well and that's part of balance and knowing what your balance is and then we also have belonging so that is knowing your purpose knowing your place and knowing your people and really connecting with them knowing who you really help the most and and going back to that first question that I mentioned at the, at the beginning what did you see in the world that you wanted to change because that is your purpose and you will you will figure out who you really want to help the most when you start to dig into that question dig deeper into it and really narrow down what you have seen what you want to do and what you want to change in the world Mm -hmm. Um, and that's when you get that sense of belonging so yeah it comes back to those three b's Mm -hmm. you know I'm feeling I'm feeling a little fired up by this conversation because um I I'm just appreciating that so many of our listeners will resonate with this conversation and also you know, may have feelings of insecurity around this conversation because I think introverts are so, we're so self-reflective. We're so willing to discern our um, opportunities for growth and um, opportunities for new awarenesses. And I think we're oftentimes the first ones to say it, right? Like, oh, I'm feeling insecure about this, or I'm feeling, you know, like I don't belong. And it's not to say that extroverts don't similarly experience these challenges or feelings of insecurity or inferiority or imposter syndrome. I think just introverts and, and, and sensitive empaths, like we're just we're so, we're so, we're so freaking (laughs) self-aware, you know, we're so much more likely to, to share it and, and at least distinguish it, right. Maybe not even necessarily share it externally. And I think it's also just really important to normalize, um, as introverts that, you know, we, we've grown up in an extroverted world. We've grown up in an extroverted education system where we were told and, and educated that we needed to be loud and we needed to speak up and we needed to talk more and, you know, hang out more. And, and I think it's just really important to normalize the, the journey of introverts that we've been fighting an uphill battle because we've been, um, educated to be someone other than who we really are. And I do think that it's, you know, only in the past decade. And, and for me, at least it started with reading, um, quiet by Susan Cain. For me, that book really normalized my own experience of being, uh, an introvert inside of an extroverted world and how much of a, uh, a challenge and, um, a disadvantage that that puts us against. And, uh, so, so your three B's like really, really bring it home for me. It's not, it's not that our, uh, that introverts are more insecure or, um, experience greater imposter syndrome. They just weren't their, their own, our own journeys weren't accepted and embraced, um, in the same way our, our extroverted peers were. Yeah, definitely. I completely resonate with all of that and how, yeah, how we just need to see, figure out who we are. And like you say, we're very introspective. And so it it, it is something that we can work on and, and do. But if you're not doing it and you're not thinking about it in the right ways, then it becomes well what why is it useful why do I need to know how to do this what, what's it going to help me me with in my business and I think that's another connection that you have to make because because if if you start a business and you don't put yourself into it it's it's just um it, it's not going to have the impact that it could have if you were fully in embedded into your business especially as a solopreneur, as someone who is the one who provides 
the service or as the coach, you are the one in your business that people need to know. They need to, um, they need to trust you and and understand what you're all about and and feel like they align with you. So when you do the work and you do it right, and then you embed it into your business in the right way, that's when you can take things to the next level and you connect with your audience and and resonate with them in in all the ways that you need to and attract the clients that you really want to work with the most. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, I mean, I, I know that um, really the work that you are, are doing have done with yourself and are sharing in your world is really in support of helping introverted entrepreneurs, like, claim more visibility, feel more um, empowered to be visible and to take up more space. And I think that's something I really appreciate about you and your journey is that, um, you know, you've become highly visible in a lot of ways. Like I know that you host the Quietly into Quietly Influential Summit and that you've partnered with Matthew Pollard to uh to launch Introvert You Academy. And I mean, reading his book, The Introvert's Edge was so deeply impactful for me. And it's certainly a favorite of our mastermind. And so I'm curious, like, um, yeah, what, what really, what has your journey been like in really claiming that visibility and feeling comfortable um, being visible in such, um, in such big ways? And what would you share with with my audience that's really made a difference for you? Well, actually, I wasn't going to get into this today, but this is one of the things that I have I have realized over the last year or so and have been developing into writing a book about, in fact, and it's called Impact Rules. And the idea is that I noticed and, and have had these rules that I live by and use them in, and they actually follow the belief, balance and belonging sense and the the same track that that kind of flows on. It's all come together in the last year or so, just as this concept, this framework, this idea of how you have rules for yourself to how you show up in the world, basically. And So I have three sets of rules, principle rules, power rules, and purpose rules. And they relate back to the belief in myself, my principles, the the power that I have, which is having balance, and then also the, the belonging piece, knowing where I belong and knowing my purpose. And so I've realized that I have these rules that I follow and and I had been doing it sort of subconsciously for some time, but it just all kind of started to come together and be a noticeable difference. And so these rules kind of look like this. So principal rules are your your outlook and your ideals and And I have rules such as speak up for what you believe in, even if it goes against popular opinion, which is my values, one of my values. Um, And also surround yourself with people you admire and respect, which, as you were mentioning, that's like my partnerships, the mentors I have, the coaches I work with, the, the people like you that I connect with, that that goes back to my approach to a lot of those things. Then I have my power rules, which is creating balance for myself. And one of those is think in frameworks, which is something I do a lot. And everything I do comes back (laughs) to frameworks. That's very clear from this conversation. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Um, And and it's something that I'm I'm pushing more into because it's one of my capabilities. It's something that comes natural to me to think in frameworks, to see frameworks, to really bring things together. And, and so that has become a power rule. I'm going to lean into that power 
Um, and it's one of my rules to think in frameworks. And another one which I borrowed from um, an, an amazing speaker, Dave, David Davis, who um, he says, be a visionary, not an expert. And I love this one because it's, again, a, a different approach. It's not trying to be the expert. It's being the one that comes up with the concepts to help other people in certain ways. And I'm, yeah, very um, a, a rule to live by that that I, I've been subconsciously living by for the last two years and really just putting down on, on paper now and realizing that that can that could uh, helping others come up with their rules like this could be a visionary way of approaching things. Um, and then purpose rules, which would be something like every experience is an opportunity to inspire. And so that is something that I live by every day, everything that I go through, I, I seek out the opportunities where I can talk about it, tell people about it to inspire them in different ways. So I have these rules that I live by that help me to show up and be my, to be the best version of myself, to have the biggest impact. Um, and so, yeah. I wasn't going to reveal this today, but it 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 seemed after your after your question, it seemed like the best explanation to how do I really make this impact and and this is how I do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think something I always appreciate about uh, sensitive introverts and working with empaths is just how deeply intentional and purposeful we are. Um, I just got married last October and our wedding planner wrote this whole blog about our wedding. And the word that she used the most in the whole blog was just intentional, how everything we did was intentional. And that was an absolute commitment of mine. And I think that, you know, when we are so intentional and purposeful about our beliefs and how we want to show up in the world, it is so clear to have that evidenced and reflected back to us. So, you know, when you shared that one of your uh, power promises is to think in frameworks, um, I'm like, absolutely. I think of all my guests, you're the one who has shared the most frameworks <laughs> <laughs> on, and on any episode. And that's so cool. Yeah. Like, it's just so yeah. cool to know that that's actually something you're you're committed to. And it's mm -hmm. it's very self-evident. Yeah, it, it's um, it's one of those things that has it's been a very recent development in understanding that that's one of my approaches, one of my rules to step into my power because my power is very much seeing the bigger picture, connecting all the dots, and and coming up with the concepts that that help you communicate in certain ways, and it all comes back to communication for me because. You can have frameworks that help you to communicate your own ideas, but you can also borrow and use frameworks that which I do all of the time. So it's 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 how you utilize different frameworks to communicate and talk. And it's yeah, it's fundamental to a lot of things that I do. So um it, it has become a rule of mine. It's become something I live by. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it makes me think of mnemonics, right? Like mnemonics are just a really helpful way for people to learn concepts and, and integrate them into their life by really having those, those frameworks and those, there's those mnemonics to remember, to trigger mm -hmm. those memories. Well, as this has been lovely, as we wrap today, um, I guess two final questions will of course include all your, your website and all your social media handles in the show notes, but I just love to invite you to share with my audience if they're interested in getting to know you and your work, which I have no doubt they will be like, where should they begin the journey? Where would you most encourage they begin? Well, if you go to fifimason.com forward slash connect, that's where you can find all of the links to my social media channels. And there's a quiz on there, which is what is your introvert uh, visibility style. And so that will help you kind of start thinking about the five different reasons why you might be self-silencing, but also 
um, to understand your introvert type and how it reflects in the way that you show up and, and get visible. Um, so it's a fun little quiz and it can can help you um, give some give you some strategies to help you start making some steps to get more visible in a way that feels aligned for you. So so there's that. And there's also my Facebook group, the um, Introvert Entrepreneurs Collective. And there's a link on there as well. Awesome. Beautiful. Um, and in closing, uh, what what's truly made the difference for you in becoming the prosperous empath that you are? What has truly made the difference for me? I would say, I would say it comes back to that sense of belonging for sure. I as soon as I felt like I was talking to my people, I understood the struggles because I could relate to everything and found my place. That is what has expedited everything in my business. And I wouldn't be where I am now if, if I hadn't done that. So, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. Resonates deeply. Fifi, thank you so much. I, um, I always appreciate connecting with like-minded peers and colleagues, just how instantaneous the connection is and that's certainly how it's felt today yeah it's been wonderful thank you so much for having me thank you so much for listening today to this episode of the prosperous empath podcast with me katherine wood make sure you subscribe and leave a review so you don't miss an episode and so more empaths just like you and me can find the show As a thank you, each month, one lucky reviewer will receive a 60-minute coaching session with a member of our Unbounded Potential team. You can find all the show notes and bonus resources over at unbounded-potential.com. Thank you so much for listening and locking arms with me to bring empathy and prosperity back into the world of business.